This week, various markets revisited their previous year-to-date lows from back in mid-May. Let's talk about why this is happening and the four things you should consider doing right now. All major market indexes are well off their highs year-to-date, and as you can see here, the Dow, the NASDAQ, and the S&P 500 have all taken it on the chin from the beginning of the the year through yesterday on uh, June 13th. So why is this happening? On both Friday and Monday, we experienced significant declines brought on really mostly from the fresh inflation data. The expectation going into the CPI report was that we would see year-over-year inflation, um, that that number lower than the previous month of 8.1%. Yet the number printed at 8.6%, so it uh, really shocked the markets. So what does this mean? It means that the Federal Reserve is going to have to be even more aggressive in putting a lid on inflation. Now, the key to doing this uh, will be doing it in a way that puts the brakes on the economy without putting us through the windshield, so to speak. So there is a world where the Fed is able to provide a soft landing without spiraling us into a recession. But to be devil's advocate here, let's just assume that we don't get that soft landing and we do, in fact, dip into a recession. Luckily, we have historical data that we can look at because recessions have actually happened quite a few times since World War II. So as you can see on the chart here from Ben Carlson, most of the time, the broad stock market does very well after a recession is over. Now, if we were to average out the forward returns for the market following uh, a recession after, say, one year, it'd be a little over 21%. After three years, cumulative return of a little over 49%. And after five years, cumulative return would be over 250%. So that's the good news. However, the bad news is that the average recessionary correction since World War II is about 31%. Or to say another way, the air tends to go faster out of the balloon than it goes in. So over the short run, the only certainty I, I can say for sure is that we're going to continue to see vol- volatility. Now, if you're standing on the platform when the train is pulled away, it's not going to back up for you. So when the uncertainties affecting the market today are eventually worked out, it's not gonna back up for you either. If you are a long-term investor, I'd be less concerned about getting on the train a stop or two early and investing too soon, and more concerned with missing the train altogether. So in my mind, there's four things to do right now. Number one, sit tight. Now is not the time to abandon your investment game plan that you had set up uh, previously. Number two, buy selectively. There's definitely opportunities to be found, found out there. Number three, strategically take tax losses. I published an article on tax loss harvesting a few weeks ago about turning your investment lemons into lemonade. Um, Number four, use this as an opportunity to upgrade the quality of your portfolio. The challenge right now is not to pick, you know, the best investment, but to pick the right investment specifically for you. So for my clients, we're already doing this um, and, and all of these things, and we can expect more turbulence through the rest of the year here. As always, if you have questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. Stay the course and stay on point. Take care.